Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining today's Aviatrix Tech Talk on Cost IQ, bringing cloud cost into focus. My name is Jamie Pope. I'm a technical marketing specialist with Aviatrix, and I'm joined by my colleague and partner in crime, Wesley Edwards. Wes, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Wes Edwards. I'm a principal solutions architect here at Aviatrix. I'm looking forward to talking to you today. Awesome. Thanks, man. So a little housekeeping before we get started. Um, if you please park your questions in the Q&A and the Zoom box there, Wes and I will be monitoring and do our level best to get to all of them. In the event we run out of time, we will 100% follow up with you. We will share ways to engage us at the end of the presentation. Now, the presentation will be in two stages. I'll be covering the first 10 to 12 minutes concerning why we created Cost IQ, a little bit about what it is, and then Wes will take over and walk you through a quick overview of the Aviatrix platform for those who may not know, and then a demonstration of, of Cost IQ itself. I'll be referencing a few reports that were recently published. One of those from Britannia, State of Multi-Cloud 2022, reported that 82% of respondents are managing a multi-cloud environment. And over half, 59% to be exact, reported more than half of their public workloads are in the public cloud. Now, I think if we'd have asked those same companies 10 years ago, or heck, even five years ago, would they be multi-cloud, I think we'd have got a resounding no. And I doubt they thought that they'd run it over 50% of their cloud workloads in the public cloud. So what is Cost IQ? Cost IQ is an intelligent chargeback, showback, and cost allocation module for Aviatrix Copilot de delivered by the Aviatrix Intelligent Cloud Networking Platform. So for our customers who know and use Copilot and love it for its network visibility, you'll find Co uh, Cost IQ in the navigation pane to the left, and it'll give you the same level of visibility to how you're actually utilizing shared resources in the cloud and help you to charge those things back or allocate your financial reporting back properly. Before we get started, uh, I'm going to just cover a couple slides about what's going on in the industry, where, where cost is kind of concerned and, and what the problem is that we're trying to solve for. So the move to the cloud continues across businesses of all sizes, and with that comes an increased cloud spend. Cloud costs are now a significant line item on IT budgets. Many teams, like Harold the developer here, were given the credit card, and now the business is taking notices of all these VPCs and VNets and workloads that are running out in the cloud. they got to account for them. And they got to figure out which business unit or line of business or department is actually using these resources. In fact, according to the State of the Cloud report by Flexera, 8% spend more than $60 million, right? That's huge. Again, I think this is kind of startling to what we may have thought three or four or five years ago. And over half spend more than $2.4 million in the cloud. 89% of respondents reported having a multi-cloud strategy, which makes cloud cost accounting very difficult. It's hard to account for costs when you have one cloud service provider, but when you have two or three or four, you're trying to account for distant lines of businesses and who's using these resources, it's very difficult. Another part of this report asked those same folks, you know, what's your top cloud initiative for 2022? And when we look at the organization's cloud initiatives, uh, we see a recurring theme. Optimizing existing use of cloud resources or cost savings was a top initiative for 2022. Uh, at 59%, funny number, that's the second time we've seen 59%. But again, over half of the respondents' top cloud initiative for 2022 is cost, it's cost savings. Uh, funny enough, this is the sixth year in a row that category has been top of the charts, right? So this isn't something new, this is something people are trying to get their arms around for quite some time. And that's not the only interesting piece of information concerning our topic of cost. We can also see that 38% reported initiatives around better financial reporting, and we're going to talk about that on cloud calls. And 33% responded they want to manage software licenses in the cloud. Again, this is something that folks are struggling with getting a handle on. Is, you know, how are we managing the calls in the cloud? Last one, I promise. And when we surveyed organizations, were asked about how they measure cloud progress against their goals. So how we how we measure our progress against our goals, uh, cost efficiency and savings was a top at 74%. Uh, that's that's a large percentage measure their progress against goals by how much they're saving in the cloud. But as you run more workloads in the cloud, that's kind of odd, right? How, how are you getting some cost efficiencies and savings in the cloud um, and, and then still manage the bills? As organizations migrate more and more workloads to the cloud, the need to right size and automate are equally important when discussing cost. Oversized or underutilized infrastructure costs organizations greatly. And the ability to automate delivery of said infrastructure and services enables companies to deliver faster 
with less dependency on large teams performing manual tasks. If you pay close attention to this data, you can pinpoint other areas where cost is really a huge factor, not just cost efficiency, but also cost avoidance at 48% of all respondents. And decreased data center footprint and retirement of technical debt each have their place in this, this cloud cost discussion. I think it's safe to say that um, cloud adoption is moving at pace, but concerns are tip of the spear subjects and organizations for cloud project, uh, projects are all around cost, right? Or largely uh, focused on, you know, how do we do all these things that we want to do and take advantage of the cloud, but still manage our costs and, and, and be good financial stewards of the company. So what are we doing at AVHS about that and, and how are we addressing it? One of the issues that we're seeing with our customers and prospects is an inability to accurately forecast, even charge back or allocate their shared resources in the cloud. They lack the telemetry needed to actually achieve this. It's, it's hard to account for shared resources. You know, we have FinOps, IT ops teams, cloud financial management systems, et cetera, that typically get their CSP bills and then they massage them to see what's being used per account ID or subscription ID or project ID, depending on which cloud you're in. Then they charge these accounts or subscriptions back based on what's being used, things like instance charges, databases, VPCs and VNets, et cetera. They get their bill, they see which account ID is using it and they charge that back. A lot of times they'll tag resource and then they can associate those resources back to account IDs or subscriptions. And then they can associate that back to departments or lines of business or various entities in the business. And again, charge those finite resources back, you know, their v VPCs, their VNets, um, virtual machines, things of that nature, EC2 instances, they can push those back to the account ID or subscription that they're, that they're assigned to, or the tag that maps back to that account ID. But where they struggle is shared resources, and we're going to talk about that on the next slide. So what is a shared resource, and how does Aviatrix help allocate those costs or, or show those things back to, to the business? Um, at Aviatrix, we can inspect the VPCs and VNets and we see all the traffic that's passing through our gateways and hitting the shared resource, a shared resource like an S3 bucket, Azure Blob Storage, or your connectivity like um, Direct Connect, Express, Express Routes, um, Next Generation Firewalls, any number of things that are shared amongst many accounts or many lines of businesses or departments, shared resource. In this example, we're looking at traffic that's hitting Next Generation Firewalls and the percentage of that traffic that belongs to various accounts or subscriptions. You know, accounts and subscriptions in this example have been grouped into various call centers. And call centers is a construct that we can create inside of Call IQ. And Wes is gonna demonstrate that to you. If we look at this example, the engineering call center will actually consists of three accounts. And now I can see what percentage of the bandwidth has actually been consumed by each account. And so what I mean by that is, because we see everything that's passing through the gateways, we can see the actual network usage in terms of percentages that are going to the shared resources. And the shared resources in this example is something that we also define inside of Cost IQ. Again, Wes will show you how to create a shared resource, but a shared resource is defined by an IP address or a site range that points at the shared resource that we're talking about. In this example, they want to know the cost of their power firewalls. So they total that up. And now they can distribute that cost out to various account holders by the percentage of distribution, right? So that engineering cost center, for example, or log one or log two, and what percentage of the firewall actually was from their traffic. They can pass this data on to FinOps teams or even integrate it with their cloud financial management platform, make that easier. On. Again, another examples of shared services, as I've mentioned before, are things like S3 buckets or Azure Blob Storage and all types of things that are shared uh, across the business. Uh, the struggle is real. We're trying to figure out who's using those and how to allocate that back, or just to have better financial reporting on, on what's being used. It's good for budgeting purposes and, and all types of things. Uh, interestingly enough, IDC is saying that the inability to do things like this is, is costing companies 20 to 30% on top of their cloud spend for the people and time it takes to, to sort through all this data. Now I'm going to pass the mic to Wes to speak about uh, the Aviatrix Intelligent Cloud Networking Platform and give you a quick demonstration of Cost IQ. Excellent. Thanks, Jamie. I appreciate that. I'm going to go ahead and share, and we'll bring up this same uh, cute picture of the, the baby here. So in order to understand how Aviatrix can help solve for this problem of, of accurately allocating your costs of shared services, 
we really need to understand the AVH platform itself and what we call intelligent cloud networking. So just to put this in a little bit of context, as you move business critical applications to the cloud, this is going to require business critical infrastructure. And we see this happening at every layer of the cloud stack. What's happening is people are taking the native constructs provided by the CSPs in a basic way, but also delivered in a different way by each of the public clouds. And they're upgrading that to advanced functionality at each one of these layers with applications that have a multi-cloud operating model. So for example, the workload and performance management layer, there are companies like Datadog, and at the data and analytics software layer, there's companies like Snowflake. At the automation layer, there's you know, HashiCorp with solutions like Terraform. And at the networking and security software layer, that's where Aviatrix plays. And this is what we call intelligent cloud networking. So what this is, is essentially, if you look at each of the clouds, the way you do networking in each cloud is different because the underlying constructs are different. So what we do is we upgrade the native cloud networking capabilities and we make it so that it's consistent across all the clouds. Now, the result of this is a multi-cloud network where you can build the networking in the same way in each one of the clouds. And you can have consistent visibility and control in each of the clouds. And you can have consistent embedded security across all the clouds. And you can have a consistent multi-cloud automation framework leveraging technologies such as Terraform. Now, because of this advanced networking and security and visibility and control and all this automation that Aviatrix provides, even in a single cloud, there's still a tremendous amount of value in using the Aviatrix platform. You don't have to be multi-cloud to take advantage of Aviatrix. Now, why are customers doing this? Well, like I mentioned earlier, it's to build a business critical cloud networking infrastructure to support their, you know, your business critical applications. So there are a whole bunch of pain points and challenges Aviatrix solves for our customers. And a few of them here, you know, you have your networking challenges, right? Within and across clouds, like overlapping IPs, automated route propagation, and extending the cloud operations model all the way to the edge. Um, our customers need enhanced visibility and troubleshooting capabilities above and beyond the CSP default constructs, you know, with capabilities like, like flow analytics, dynamic topology mapping, um, network troubleshooting tools, and cost IQ, which of course we'll talk about more. And their security and compliance requirements like distributed firewalling in the network or next generation firewall insertion, high performance encryption and automated threat detection and mitigation. And all this needs to be accomplished while providing simplicity, agility and automation in a multi-cloud manner. And these are just some of the features and capabilities of the platform, but all of these work together to solve the fundamental problem of building business critical cloud networking infrastructure for your business critical applications. So what makes Aviatrix unique? Well, it's really our platform, which is a combination of Aviatrix Airspace and Aviatrix Copilot. So Airspace is our multi-cloud networking data plane. Now, the key piece of this is that we embed intelligent telemetry throughout this multi-cloud network. And we also provide distributed control points with the ability to do, you know, for example, firewalling anywhere in the network, as opposed to a firewall that's bolted onto the side of the network. The other side of this is Aviatrix Copilot which provides you operational visibility, allows you to troubleshoot quickly and see exactly what's going on in your multi-cloud network in a consistent way. And the second part of that is programmable intent, which is how you tell Aviatrix Airspace what you want to do, how you want traffic to flow, what kind of firewalling rules do you want to apply and be enforced in the airspace network. And this becomes your multi-cloud network platform for visualization, control and deployment in a single or multi-cloud environment. Now, looking at airspace just a little bit deeper, when we talk about embedded telemetry, this is what gives you that ability to see everything in your cloud network, like network traffic telemetry, security telemetry, application level telemetry, and of course, the topic of this talk, the, the cost telemetry. And then distributed control, it gives you the ability to actually control everything at distributed points in the network. So for example, we can do distributed firewalling anywhere in the network, built into the network, um, versus bolted onto the side, or we can do things like intelligent traffic control. And we do this using programmable intent, meaning that if I see this kind of traffic, execute this intended action. And there are a number of different kinds of actions, both security actions like firewalling or you know, network or micro segmentation, domain name filtering, threat and anomaly detection, all of those things that you know of as being security capabilities. But now that network security is baked into the network. It's part of the network and it's not something you have to bolt onto the side of the network. 
Now, using that same programmable intent, we can do traffic control actions like send traffic down an optimized path or do packet captures or log for audit. And these are just you know, some of the kinds of actions we can take based on seeing different kinds of traffic. So with all this is the basis of the platform, right? What we can do is we can leverage this embedded telemetry that I talked about as part of AVHX Airspace, and we can give you deep insights into your application traffic flows and what resources are talking to which shared services. And with all that insight, we build a dashboard and co-pilot called Cost IQ. Now, instead of just telling you about Cost IQ using slides, let's go ahead and just dive into the demo and let's look at Cost IQ in, uh, in a live multi-cloud uh, environment. So now, this is my this is my co-pilot. This is the view into my multi-cloud network that I have deployed. And so first, I just want to show you the, the topology view, right? So this is a way that you can uh, see what's deployed in your network. And this happens in a dynamic manner. And so I can see that I have um, I have resources deployed. I have, you know, Aviatrix Transits deployed in multiple regions, in multiple clouds here in AWS and the East and the West and Azure in a couple different regions and a GCP in a couple different regions. And connected to each of these transits, I have application VPCs and VNets. So I can see in here, I have multiple application workloads that are deployed inside my different VPCs and VNets. And I'll just, you know, click on these, show you that I have my application workloads deployed across my regions and across my clouds. And they all have the ability to talk to each other using this Aviatrix airspace um, network that we've built out. Now, what I have in my lab is I have each of these uh, application workloads is sending traffic to other application workloads. And so I've generated application flows between clouds, between regions and across my network. And also all of these applications, I actually, they're sending and they're talking to a server that I have on-prem, okay? And so now I have traffic going throughout the network and traffic going to on-prem. Now, like we talked about this embedded telemetry, right? So this is able, this allows us to see all these application flows that are happening in the network. And I want to show a couple of things to highlight why this is valuable for cost IQ. So first off here, I'm just showing you, this is an overall view of, you know, some graphs of all the different application flows happening in my network. And I can look at things like, you know, source IP or host or source port, destination, host or port. I can filter by any of these values, tremendous amount of flexibility and visibility into my application flows. And I can do things like look at trends. I can see historically how much traffic I've been receiving based on source IP, destination IP, total traffic usage. I could even look and see, you know, where my traffic, which the, the locations that my traffic's reaching out to to access various resources on a geo basis. And what I really want to show you here for, for the cost IQ discussion is my flows. I told you that I have, you know, applications deployed across all of my different clouds in multiple regions. And right here, I can see all the different uh, sources and destinations. So I can see that this particular application, it's sending a lot of traffic to this application over here and some up to here and to my different locations. And if I go, I look at it from a destination perspective, this one here, this is my on-prem. So I can see from here that my, um, all of my applications across all of my clouds, they're all sending traffic to my on-prem server. And if I you know, select this, I could even get a, a different view into how much traffic each of these are sending. Now, if I take this intelligence, if I take this flow data and I apply that towards costing, then I can get tremendous insight into which applications are using my shared services and how much are they using. And so that's where we get into cost IQ. So I'm gonna go ahead and move to our cost IQ page here. Now really cost IQ is about you know, defining cost centers and shared services and then getting that, that visibility into that insight into um, how those are being utilized. And so first let's talk about cost centers. So when I go to cost centers here, again, first you define, you know, this is optional, but you define a cost center. And these are really logical groupings of your various departments or business units, or however you want to group your resources. And you can do this across multiple accounts and subscriptions across your different clouds and different VPCs or VNets. Right, so for example, I have a QA resource defined, right, excuse me, a QA cost center defined. And within this QA cost center, I've added, these are individual application VPCs and VNets that are um, all part of my QA infrastructure. And they're across multiple clouds and multiple accounts. And so I've grouped them together as these are all QA resources that I wanna be defined as my QA cost center. So to create a new cost center, I can just come in here and really what I'm defining is 
you know, the name of the cost center. I'm going to call application B. So let's say I have a particular customer facing application where all of its costs need to be charged to that cost center, or at least visible to that cost center. And then I'm going to look at all my application VPCs and VNets, and I'm going to select those that are associated with application B. So I have, you know, a, a VPC in AWS that is hosting application B resources. I have one here in Azure, um, and I have another one here in GCP. And so now I've defined my application VPCs and VNets and given it a name. And now I can save that. And these are all pulled together into my cost center. I'll do a little quick refresh there. And here on this screen, I can see overall of all the traffic in my Aviatrix Airspace network, what percentage is attributed to these different cost centers that I've built. And like I showed earlier, you know, if I click into application B, I can come and I can see all the individual VPCs and VNets that are part of this. And I can look at the relative amount of traffic. So for some customers, they're getting value just by understanding that, hey, this Azure, this, you know, Azure at B um, VNet, it's using 45% of all this cost center traffic. Maybe that's on purpose. Maybe something's amiss there, right? And you can do a little more investigation. Now with this, you can always, you know, drill down a little bit deeper, right? I can look at, you know, individual, you know, uh, AVH's gateways inside there. And I can also filter, right? You know, you're... My cost center, I have, you know, three VPCs and VNets. It's not very big. You might have a hundred in there. And if you want to look at, you know, the relative traffic for a particular one, I can come and I can filter by VPC or VNet, by region, by traffic type. So I'm going to say, okay, I want to look at all my, uh, you know, GCP uh, VPCs, right? And I can look at the relative traffic for those and be able to filter those. Um, and I can also export this as a CSV. So if I need to take this and, and bring it into other tools. So this is cost centers. This is, I define my logical groupings of, of the different business units or departments that are gonna be leveraging my shared services. Now let's go into shared services and let's talk about that a little bit. So examples of shared services, Jamie gave some up front. You know, it could be a shared application. Maybe you have, you know, a syslog collector like Splunk, right? I have one defined here. Maybe it's a, an AI or machine learning application that, that you know, multiple, you know, of your end customer applications are accessing. Um, it could be a CSP service like S3. I've defined here all of the uh, IP addresses for S3 and US East 1, right? And so if I have resources accessing those via S3, then maybe that's, that's a shared service. Um, another example might be a next generation firewall cluster. And so all the IP addresses associated with that or on-prem connectivity, like, you know, maybe you have a direct connect or express route, a cloud interconnect, you know, depending on your cloud, and those have costs associated with them. And you don't probably don't have a separate one per application or per department. You have one that, that all of your you know, cloud resources are accessing, but you don't have a way of understanding who's using how much of that, right? You know, uh, most companies today, again, like Jamie said up front, you understand how much you're spending on the shared service. You get a bill telling you how much your you know, Azure Express route circuit costs, or you can look at your AWS bill and your next generation firewall instance costs and licensing costs. But the challenge that our customers are facing is when you have multiple lines of business or multiple departments and they're all using these shared services, how do you accurately get a handle on how to allocate that usage, right? And maybe it's just for visualization and awareness for reporting purposes to your FinOps teams, but maybe it's also for chargeback. You need to charge back to these and build these departments or lines of business based on how much they're actually using that shared service. So let's show how this works. So if I'm going to go here, I'm gonna select uh, add a shared service and it's really straightforward. I'm gonna create a shared service called on-prem. If you recall, I showed you those flows in Flow IQ of all my applications are accessing a server that I have on-prem. Now I can define my network. My network and my on-prem is uh, 192.168.50.0 slash 24. This is the subnet where all of my on-prem resources live. So I'm gonna go ahead and define this particular on-prem shared service. Now what I can see is I have this on an overall report here and I can get some overall views into the amount of, uh, of data accessing this resource where this is really powerful. If I select on-prem here, now I can look at all of my cost centers and I can see of these cost centers, how much of that on-prem bandwidth of all the traffic that's going to that subnet that's on-prem, what percentage is coming from my different lines of business or different departments or different applications. So, 
for example, let's say this were a direct connect circuit that I was using to get on prem. And let's say just a random example is a thousand dollars a month, right? Instead of having to charge all four of these departments or lines of business, 25% of that cost, I can accurately say, hey, application A is using 43% of that bandwidth. They should pay 43% of that on-prem cost, whereas dev is only using 16%. They should only pay 16% of that direct connect cost. Because again, it's giving that, that intelligent allocation of how the shared services are being used. And you could use the same thing, for example, with an S3. I have a couple different resources. My two applications are the only ones that use S3. But application A is using that at a much higher rate than application B. Now, if I go back into to on-prem, you can break this down by cost center by default, but I can also go in and do that by cloud account. So some of our customers, many of our customers, they already have their, their departments and their resources. They have everything organized. So the cloud account is actually the most accurate way of determining shared resources. And that's fine. You know, I have a cloud account you know, per, per cloud in my, in my environment, and each one's got multiple VPCs that are using multiple lines of business. So for me, this isn't the best way of breaking it down, but for many customers, you can see, okay, of the overall amount of traffic that's heading to on-prem, these are the different accounts um, where those belong. So you have that flexibility to go by cost center or cloud account. Now, the same thing that we talked about before, <clears throat> um, with, with filtering and, and drilling down, we have that here, that, you know, I showed that in cost center. We have that here with our shared services as well. So for example, I can come in here with my application A. I understand that application A is using 43% of, you know, my direct connect costs, but now I can come in and I can see <clears throat> which VPCs and VNets within that cost center are using the most of that cost, both on a relative basement, ba excuse me, basis or absolute traffic. So now if I need to be even more granular in how I charge back or show back the usage, I can say, okay, um, the AWS and Azure app A, VPCs and VNets are using the majority of this traffic, less so from GCP. Or maybe that shouldn't be the case and I could, I could discover why that's not more evenly distributed. But now I have this visibility into how much of my direct connect costs are being used by my different VPCs and VNets, both at a, a, a more lower level here or a higher level from the overall cost center perspective. Um, and like I mentioned, as you're talking about, uh, um, you know, as we're talking about the filtering capabilities, it, let, me, let me jump back in here to this application. I only have three VPCs and VNets. It's not a super large lab environment, demo environment that I've built, but you might have hundreds in here. And you might need to understand, well, how much of the total traffic is, is a particular VPC or, or VNet using? And again, I can come in and look by region or a VPC or VNet value. I can say, well, you know, I need to understand all my GCP resources, you know, how much of the relative total traffic or absolute traffic they're using. So I have tremendous amount of filtering capabilities. I can do the same thing by searching for resources and all of that good stuff. And of course, you know, as with everything in Copilot, I can download this as a CSV. So now I could take this information and, you know, especially the cost center layer, maybe I need to bring this into my CFM tools or to my FinOps team saying, okay, you know, for this shared service, you know, this, this is the amount, you know, I, I, this is the amount the application A and B are using, and I can send them a, you know, a CSV with, with that data. Now, of course, all of this can be used from a, you know, you, you can adjust your time period, right? You know, most companies are maybe looking at this more of a month to date basis or a quarter to date basis. So they want to look at the previous month. Um, in my case, you know, I don't have data going back that far. I'm going to focus on some of the shorter, shorter time frames. Um, and so now that you have all this, this information there, you have your cost centers defined and you can see and you have your shared services defined and you can see how your cost centers are leveraging those shared services. And now you have this insight into how to allocate those costs. I can also go into overview and I can get an overall view of you know, what are my trends looking like? So for example, um, if I look at my cost center trends, I can say over time, you know, and again, this is my lab. I had stuff torn down over the last week, but I can see over time, hey, my, my cost center trends are changing, right? More of my network traffic is starting to be used by application B than application A, and that wasn't the case before. And so now I can do planning based on that. Or I can come down to my shared service and I can say, okay, hey, you know, I used to not have very much of, of my S3 shared service, but now over time that's trending upwards. 
So what does that mean for my overall cost? And do I need to start doing chargeback because those costs are increasing? Or how, you know, whatever insights you want to get from that, um, you know, that that particular um, graph. And again, all of this can be can be adjusted by by time period, you know, custom time periods, um, and all of that. So that's my quick demo of uh, of Cost IQ. Again, showing you how to define those cost centers, define those shared services, and how you can get insight into how those shared services are used based on cost center or cloud account. So let me pause there. I know, Jamie, you've been working furiously in the background on, on some of our questions. Um, wanted to see if, if uh, open it up for questions. If you have more questions, please put them in the Q&A. We can address some of them live. We can talk about them um, or we can get back to you on them. So uh, J Jamie, where are we at on, on the questions here? Hey, thanks, Wes. Yeah, I'm actually answering one to Perry now. Perry, thanks for your question. I was, I was actually typing while, while Wes was finishing up there, so I'll, I'll drop that in there as well. But I had a few myself that, that I, I heard from as well, Wes, like uh, how, how do we enable cost IQ? I wanted to layer on top of a question for Prashanth about how we uh -huh. enable cost IQ inside of uh, Copilot. Absolutely. So, so if you have Copilot today, right, you can go and on the left-hand side, you'll see the cost IQ icon. And there'll be an enable button, right? And you can just click enable from there. Now, you know, depending on, you know, it, I encourage you to work with your account team. If, if you're running, you know, a, a different version or something, we might have to, to do an upgrade. You got to ensure you're on the right version that properly supports cost IQ on the back, on the back end. So, um, you know, if you have issues enabling it, you know, you can work with your account teams on that. Um, and you can also go into settings and look at licensing and you can disable it from there as well and re-enable and disable um, you know, something that, you know, even if before enabling it, if you just want to get a feel for what it looks like in your environment, um, you know, I can actually disable cost IQ and right here, and we just have some sample data. So right here, you can see, you know, this page is showing sample data. So if you just want to demo this, play with it, look at it a little bit, look at some of the cost centers, you know, we have some demo data by default there in cost IQ that you can leverage um, if you're not ready to, to go ahead and enable cost IQ. Some, and how how long is 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 data there? One thing that uh, I, I think folks might have noticed, I know I did when I started using Cost IQ, is when I created a service like for S3 in my environment, uh, I saw all the stuff that was there previously, and I know you showed that on on prem. How how does that work? Yeah, exactly. I, I added on prem, and all this data was already there, right? Because Copilot, like we talked about, there's this embedded telemetry throughout the network, and that telemetry is being sent to all the gateways, or excuse me, being sent from all the gateways to Copilot. And Copilot has this data and it stores this data. And so with Cost IQ, we're really just putting a dashboard around that existing data. So now we're showing you based on all this, this flow data that's already in Copilot, how that's allocated. So it's existing data, it's already in Copilot. You know, if you've been using it already, your gateways are already sending that data there. It's all this flow IQ data that's already there. We're just taking that and applying it to, um, you know, financial operations using Cost IQ. So that's pretty cool. So, you know, if you have some shared resources that, you know, you struggle with, or even if you don't know that you struggle with it, uh, once you add the shared service and the cost IQ, you can start to take action on that. That stuff will be there if you're, if you're an ADHX customer yeah. and you're busting that traffic through the gateway. Absolutely. And, and you can, and Copilot is very flexible in the amount of data you can store as well, right? You can, you can add data nodes. You can actually, through settings, set data retention periods and how much data you want to, you know, all, based on the different types of, of data and flows. And so you can really tune ensuring you have the, the right amount of data you need to accurately, um, you know, attribute your costs. Wes, do you think there'd be any, any means for us to see uh, or identify overutilized or underutilized shared resources with, with, with you know, what we can see here in, in Cost IQ? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, today, I, I don't have a, a dashboard here, but, um, you know, under Aviatrix billing and, and on some of the, the you know, programmable intent that, that we're that we're adding to the platform. Yes, absolutely. You'd be able to go and say, okay, this this gateway is is not being fully utilized, right? And so, um, so yeah, in, in Aviatrix building, there's a way to see that in some of the gateway, you know, scaling capabilities that we have. You'd be able to set parameters around that and and scale down a gateway if it's if it has, you know, uh, if it's if it's not using very much, you know, resources, or scale up a gateway if it's starting to get low on resources. That's true. You know, I think, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an engineer myself by trade, and I think I can't tell you the number of times in my past where we've, we've spun up things that really weren't used, but we, we didn't know that for a while. And, you know, Perry asked a question about, 
native cloud charges. And, and I wanted to layer on top of that. I, I just thought of something. Maybe I, I defined a shared service here that was pointing at an EIP uh, that I built out a month or two ago, but I see no traffic there. Is it time to revisit and talk to that line of business about, you know, why is that there and who's using it? And is anybody actually going to make use of it? It may give me some visibility into things that, that I need to take action on. So I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, this is this is our first iteration of the dashboard. So in the future, in the coming months, we'll add things like, you know, being able to pull in, you know, some of the CSP billing and be able to, you know, apply that to this intelligence. Um, and, you know, and, and, and we're continually looking at, you know, using CSP native tags to pull in intelligence. So that's all, you know, part of the platform that, that's, you know, inherit, you know, Aviatrix being born in the cloud, a cloud native platform that we're continuing to pull in pull into this. So this is just the, the tip of the iceberg of the, of the value that uh, Cost IQ is bringing. Awesome, cool. Was there any other questions on, on the phone or, or in the chat, please let us know. If not, you know, I think that's a, might be a wrap. We can chat about how to get in touch with us if you'd like to. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think uh, the survey has just been put on the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and advance to one more slide. Um, Go ahead, Jamie, I'll let you talk to this. Yeah, for sure, man, I appreciate it. Hey, if you notice there's QR codes down there uh, at the bottom, if you'd like to scan those, it'll make it pretty easy. But if you'd like to learn more or you have questions about cloud networking in general, you can get with us and we can chat with you about all this stuff by, by scanning that QR code, the first one there, or clicking that link. We have a an ACE multi-cloud networking certification. So ACE is Aviatrix Certified Engineer. There's self-paced and instructor-led classes available. There's a code here, ACE Multicloud. If you scan that QR code, you can sign up for our associate level uh, instruction that comes with the certification and actually use that code there to get in there and, and do your thing. And then Wes and I'll be at uh, AWS reInvent here at the end of the month going into December. Uh, it's going to be great. We're going to have a lot of content, six demo booths. We're going to be covering a lot of stuff that we do with Aviatrix Intelligent Cloud Networking. We'd love to see you there. If you're in the area, please stop by, say hello. We'll be doing some giveaways, doing some demonstrations and chatting about all things networking in the cloud and how Aviatrix makes that simple for you. So I think that's it for me. Yeah, and I think we just, uh, I think a survey was, was popped up. We'd appreciate it if you'd please take the time to uh, answer those survey questions. And uh, yeah, feel free to, to, to reach out and connect if you have any questions. And we do appreciate your time today, folks. Thanks so much.